Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm talking middle grade March. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. If you're not new, welcome back to Spread Book Joy. And if you are new, um, I just let you know I'm a primary school teacher. So the reason I started this whole channel was to promote children's literature. It's a bit broader than that now, but essentially that is still my mission. So I can't not take part in a middle grade March readathon. So my part of my um, well-being for myself this year as well, in terms of enjoying my reading a bit more as well, is not for making too many plans, firm plans. So all of the things I'm going to talk about in terms of my reading and how I might fit the prompts for this wonderful readathon are possibilities. So it's not a middle grade March TBR video, it's a middle grade March pile of possibilities. And alongside that, I thought I would do some recommendations for anyone out there who wants to take part in this brilliant readathon. I'm going to link all the host videos in the description box below, so you should go and check those out. But it's a really, really popular readathon. It's the first time I've taken part in it um, or promoted it in any way, and I'm really, really excited to do that. I've also seen some fantastic middle grade March TBR uh, videos out there and recommendation videos from uh, Julie at the Hungry Bookworm, Gina Stanya. Um, I'm going to link all of their uh, videos, related videos, in the description box as well. So really do go and check them out. It's a whole month celebrating middle grade. And if you're not sure what middle grade is, it's a category of books that's sort of aimed at children aged roughly 8 to 12 years old, though you can be a lot older. A lot of adults love reading middle grade now. Um, I'm going to do a video soon actually on why adults read middle grade fiction. If you're an adult who reads middle grade fiction for enjoyment, um, then uh, let me know in the comments below um, if you'd be interested in um, t talking to me about why you like middle grade. If you're a YouTuber of your own channel, if you're on booktube, if you'd be interested in participating in filming a clip for me and talking about why you like middle grade, that'd be really interesting. So I'm just really fascinated to know. So um, keep an eye out because I might put a community post out to see if people can, um, you know, what, what their thoughts are on adults who read middle grade. If you are an adult who reads middle grade, why you do it. I initially started um, reading middle grade mainly because of my job as a teacher, but I do find that some of my favourite books in the last few years have been middle grade books. And I'm going to talk about a couple of them um, as we go on for the recommendations. So there are five prompts and a group read for Middle Grade March. The group read is a book called Pony by RJ Palacio. RJ Palacio wrote Wonder, which is a massive juggernaut of a book. And I've actually got a video on Wonder for an in-depth overview of it, um, which I'll put a link for. Um, but I'm not going to take part in the group read of Pony, but it looks like a fantastic book. So um, check out the host videos on details how to join that read along. But there are five prompts. So the first prompt is to read a book with five or more words in the title. Now there's quite a few on my, so I've decided as well, I'm not going to do uh, any books for this readathon that are not on my TBR. I'm not going to purchase any new books because I'm on a book buying ban at the moment. So anything that I use for this read along has to be, or readathon, has to be from my existing TBR. So um, in terms of books that have five words in the title, there were a few. So I've got um, The Boy Who Made Everyone Laugh, that's a possibility. So uh, it's all about a Billy Plimpton who has a big dream to become a famous stand-up comedian when he's older, but he has a stammer. So I think this is gonna be absolutely wonderful. I got sent this for my birthday last year from one of my Instagram friends. So that's a possibility for the five word prompt. Um, it's also um, a contemporary book. So there are five prompts, I should tell you what they are really. A pro book with five or more words in the title, a book featuring an orphan main character, a contemporary book, a book set in Asia or featuring an Asian main character, and a book older than you are. So uh, some of these, will f these ones with the five word titles, lots of them will fit the contemporary uh, thing as well, so they could double up for me. Next up is Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. Elle McNichol wrote my favourite book of 2020, or my favourite middle grade book of 2020, which was A Kind of Spark, um, all about an autistic girl. And this is a me and another autistic main character because Elle McNichol is herself autistic, so she's a neurodivergent author. And this is all about Cora, who meets a new best friend called Adrian, and she doesn't want to explain that she's different, but Adrian surprises her, and soon she's drawn into a whirlwind of fun, adventure, and friendship. 
and then into the world of the mysterious Pomegranate Institute. Here's another five word title prompt, The Valley of Lost Secrets. It's September 1939 when Jimmy is evacuated to a small village in Wales. It couldn't be more different from London. But then he finds a skull hidden in a tree and suddenly the valley is more frightening than the war. So I've heard such amazing things about this book and it's high on my priority list for my TBR. So this may well be one that I also get to. Um, and lastly, this has been on my TBR for the longest time and it is where the river runs gold. And it's all set in the city of Kairos. Kairos, Kairos city was beautiful once before the storm. Now the flower beds are built over with brick and the bees are long gone and children are sent to freedom fields to pollinate crops by hand for the good of the nation. So it sounds a bit dystopian to me and um, yeah, I just love that cover. Um, next up in my pile of possibilities, uh, one of the things that prompts was a book that is older than me. So, um, a book that was published before 1977, or in 1977 I could count because I was born in August. So, um, I've got a number of possibilities on my TBR. One of them is The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. Never read it, um, and it's a book that I feel is a classic. I uh, might enjoy getting to that. Um, another one, now I read Alan Garner's The Weird Stone of Brissingerman uh, last year. Lots of amazing authors like Neil Gaiman and uh, people like that cite Alan Garner as an influence from when they were a child. So I've got two Alan Garner books. I've got The Moon of Gomrath and I've got The Owl Service and I have never read either of them. So that's another um, two books. So there are three that could be fit in the reader book that's older than you prompt. But there is one I'm definitely going to read and it is definitely older than me. And that is Anne of the Island. So if you've been following me for a little while, you'll know I've been taking part in a year long Anne along, which is reading one book a month from the Anne of Green Gables uh, series of books written by Ellen Montgomery. And Anne of the Island was published around 1910, 1911, something like that. So I'll be reading that with the lovely group. If you're interested in joining, it's a wonderful group. It's one of the best reading groups I've ever been in. Um, it's run by Emily from Novel Novels, and I will link the video, uh, put the link to her video announcing that in the description box below. So go and check it out if you're interested in reading any of those with us. Another book that I'm definitely going to be reading, and it is a contemporary, and it is one of a series. It's The False Rose by Jacob Wigelius, and I will be reading this because it's a library book. I got it out of the library because I'm on a book buying ban, and this is pretty new. It was released last year, and it's the third book in the Murderer's Ape series. Um, so Sally Jones is a, a gorilla who solves mysteries and it's Murderer's Ape is one of the books that when I was saying to you some of my favourite books, not just middle grade books, but favourite books in the last few years have been middle grade and The Murderer's Ape is absolutely one of those books. I'm going to recommend that um, when I go through my recommendations for you. So I'm definitely reading this because it's got to get back to the library um, in about two weeks time. Now, I've only got one book on the pro on my TBR that possibly fills the orphan prompt, and that is The Island at the End of Everything uh, by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Now, I don't know if the child in this book ends up being an orphan, but she is sent to an orphanage. She has a sick mother at home and she's sent to an orphanage. So Amy lives with her sick mother on an island where the sea is as blue as the sky. It's all she knows and loves, but the arrival of a cruel government official, Mr Zamora, changes her world forever. Her island is to become a colony for sufferers of leprosy. Banished to an orphanage across the water, Amy meets a honey-eyed girl named for butterflies and together they set out to find a way back home to the island at the end of everything. I think this was her debut novel, I might be wrong on that. So lastly on my TBR, a possible book that I might read fits three prompts and it fits the final prompt that I haven't really talked about and it's the only book on my TBR that fits this prompt. So the final prompt that I haven't, uh, that this might fit for me is to read a book set in Asia or with an Asian main character and it's The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nazana Farouk and it's been on my TBR for quite some time um, and it's uh, all about a girl who steals the Queen's jewels and she rides off on an elephant into a jungle adventure. So um, this one would fit prompt the contemporary prompt and the five word title prompt so yeah and I think she might be an orphan so it might actually fit quite a few of them next books that I'm going to do are recommendations they're books I've read and they're all recommendations for middle grade March I've got quite a few here so I'm not going to spend too long describing them but um, they're all highly recommended and they're lovely so first up in terms of the Asian prompt there is an author I 
absolutely adore called Jaspinda Billen and Jaspinda Billen has written three books now but I've read two of them one of them is Asher and the Spirit Bird and the other is Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar and they're both set in India and they're just magical realism they're absolutely beautiful books I mean and the covers some of the most stunning covers I've seen in middle grade they're just beautiful the next load of books are books that you could pick for the prompt about orphans uh, they're all contemporary books well, actually apart from one or two of them but I'll let you know what ones they are so uh, two of them are some of my favorite books for the last couple of years in terms of not just middle grade but books in general uh, the first one is the thousand year old boy by Ross Welford and it's all about a boy called Alfie Monk who's like nearly any other nearly teenage boy except he's a thousand years old and can remember the last Viking invasion of England. This is heartwarming and fun and just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous book. The Midnight Guardians by Ross Welford. I can't talk highly enough about this one. I've got a video for it. I'll put a link in the description box to the video of it, but it's just one of my absolute favourite books in recent years. It's set during the Second World War and it's all about a boy called Cole who is an orphan who's been evacuated out of London but he has to get back to London to try and rescue his sister and his imaginary friends come to life to help him. One of which is a giant tiger. So yeah, can't get better than that, right? Then we have The Dream Snatcher by Abby Elphinstone. This is the first in a trilogy of books about a character called Mole Pecksniff. It's middle grade fantasy and Mole is an orphan with um, a secrets in her past that she has to uncover and find out about and she also has a best friend who is a cat called griff a wild cat love it this is beautiful the wonderling by mira bartok it's not very well known it should be better known it's the first book in a series because there is a follow-up coming out for it which is good because it kind of ends with some questions that you need answered but it's all about this one-eared creature called um the wonderling he's a one-eared groundling he's called a mix of fox and boy and he lives in miss carbuncle's home for wayward and misbegotten creatures and um yeah it's an absolutely kind of charming book uh, kind of very Dickensian in the sort of uh, the start of it where he's in this orphanage and the way they're treated um, and yeah it's just unusual and actually really lovely I really enjoyed reading it Here's a classic one, Journey to the River Sea, about an orphan called Maya who has to travel along the Amazon to be sent to relatives because she's imagining that she'll be um, going to a loving family but she finds she's got two spiteful cousins who see the jungle as the enemy and refuse to go outdoors and she, Maya, wants to explore and see everything there is to see and eventually she has to escape. So that's lovely, that's classic, that one. Another classic featuring an orphan, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This is Neil Gaiman's homage to the Jungle Book. So instead of a boy growing up in the jungle being raised by animals, it's a boy growing up in a graveyard being raised by ghosts. Um, so Bod, who is this character, he's called Nobody Owens, Bod for short, is raised in a graveyard because his parents are horrifically murdered in the very first chapter, so it's not a spoiler. Um, but yeah, this is a brilliant book. So more very quick recommendations just because I love them and I have videos for a lot of these so I'll link those in the description box below. Julia and the Shark by Kira Millwood Hargrave, just beautiful. Also if you get a copy look how gorgeous this is, it's a beautifully produced book. It's illustrated by her artist husband Tom DeFreston and it's a story about hope and family and yeah it's just gorgeous. I've got a video on it, I'll put it in the description box. One of my most recent reads, The Last Bear by Hannah Gold, all about a girl who befriends a polar bear and it's got lots of eco climate change messages in it, really positive and hopeful book. Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow, all about a boy called Archie who finds out that his dad is gay and he goes on a mission to find out what that means for him and for his dad. And it's just really gorgeous book. Uh, I read it in Pride Month last year and I've got a video on that as well. A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. I talked about this already. This was my middle grade book of 2020. It was a debut by Elle McNichol and it's all about a girl called Addie who is autistic. She lives in a small Scottish village. She discovers that there uh, were women accused of witchcraft and basically murdered in uh, the 16th century or 17th century in her village and she doesn't know why there isn't a monument to them so she sets out to campaign for a monument because these women were killed for being different and she feels very strongly um, connected with their story. Um, it's just, I just love this book, loved it. Sheets is a middle grade, kind of pre-teen middle grade so it's like the top end of middle grade um, graphic novel all about a girl called Marjorie who has lost her mother and it's just one of the most kind of beautiful illustrated books and it's all around grief 
and she befriends a ghost called Wendell. So Marjorie's family own a laundrette and every night a young ghost called Wendell comes to the laundrette and he plays in there. So um, they befriend each other and yeah, it's just absolutely stunning. It's got a limited colour palette. It's just really beautifully drawn and kind of poignant story. Two that I absolutely love, Maggie Blue in the Dark World. I've got a video on it. I'll put a link in the description box, but it's a very kind of strange, dark, middle grade fantasy book. It's the first in a series as well. Uh, the second book hasn't come out yet, but I'm really excited to see when that happens. Last but not least, a book I'd recommend to anybody to read. It's it, whether you read middle grade or don't. The Murderer's Ape by Jacob Wigelius, who also illustrates. So all these beautiful style illustrations he does himself and they're throughout the book. So you can see um, there's the map and some of the characters inside. Um, and The Murderer's Ape is a murder mystery all about, uh, it's set in Lisbon and Sally Jones is the engineer aboard a ship called the Hudson Queen and she's best friends with the chief and they sail around delivering things all around the world and they live a life like that. They get stuck in Lisbon when their boat breaks down and then um, the chief gets accused of murder and Sally has to prove that he didn't do it. And she meets a whole cast of amazing characters along the way. It's fast paced, it's tightly plotted and I love this book. So The False Rose is the follow up to that. So um, yeah, this, if we're gonna recommend one book to you is this one. Obviously that's a huge number of recommendations. Um, mine are also a pile of possibilities aside from Anne of the Island and The False Rose. All the other books I mentioned on my TBR are just possibilities because I'm really enjoying not pressurising myself to read or complete certain things in, in a certain time at the moment. Um, I've even removed my annual reading goal from Goodreads and I cannot tell you the psychological um, pressure that's taken off of me. I didn't think it would take so much pressure off me, but it has. Um, so what are your plans? Are you taking part in middle grade March? Are you an adult that loves reading middle grade? And if so, um, let me know in the comments below. What are your plans for middle grade March? Why do you love reading middle grade? I'll be really fascinated to hear your comments on it. Um, and if you've never been here before and you'd like to subscribe for more of this rambling nonsense, have a go, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, and hopefully I will see you again here soon. Bye.